This one is the optical decap sensor. Um, I think there's probably some kind of optical thing that looks for a primer to come down through here. But um, in my experience, it's not really useful because uh, once this sensor in here gets dirty, yeah, it really doesn't work. And uh, to take this off, you gotta like take this out and clean it and everything. Um, the press will stop if it, if it, you know if if uh, if the if it's not decapped if the case is not decapped then it will stop in station two anyway. So I don't really use this sensor. Now we have the low primer sensor about to get tripped. See how it pushes down that metal wire? Push down more, maybe one more round, it will stop by itself. And here we go. Press stops. This here is the powder check sensor, run in station three. In the past, I've been using a RCBS lockout die. Um, when there's low powder or double charge, it locks out, the press stops, it works. But uh, I decided to go with this because apparently the way the sensor is designed, you can pull the sensor off and here's just a die. Um, the die itself, Mark 7 will sell it to you for 20 bucks. And I have this die set up in different caliber automated tool heads. So even though the power check die itself is 250, if you load multiple calibers, each additional caliber is only 20 bucks. And uh, I thought it was a great deal uh, to get the automation. So here's how this die works. You've got the measurement rod here. And when the case, depending on powder level, um, when this is flush with the, you know, the top, then it's okay when you have got a double charge, or when you have no charge, it will go up higher and a double charge will be lower. So let's, let me show you. I've prepared three cases, no charge, normal charge, double charge. Start with a normal charge. And let me show you how this works. All right, so single cycle, just to test it out goes up, look at the switch, parallel with it. Okay, it will continue to advance. Here is the no charge. There we go, case powder level incorrect. And here's a double charge. Taught it again. This is the bullet sensor. It works by shooting a laser. You line it up against this mirror, and when it's aligned correctly, what you would do is you kind of make sure it goes back to this hole here. And when it's blocked, it knows that. Oh, when it's not blocked, then it knows that there's a problem with the bullet. Um, once you set up this mirror to get the correct station that you want. And for me, it's in station five. All you need to do is adjust this up or down based on the bullet that you have. Here's how it looks like when it's set up correctly. Can see that the shadow is blocking the laser. Now we have an upside down bullet. the laser goes back into that sensor hole. Here's how it works in practice. I pre stage three cases, so um, there's gonna be an upside down bullet in there. And let's run this. This is a correct bullet. It allows it to go through. Now we have an upside down bullet. Bullet now properly positioned. 
because the sensor is not blocked. So what you do here, correct the error. Okay. Let it finish the thing. And if I'm running the press fully automated, it will keep going. When you first turn on Mark 7, it won't let you run until you calibrate it. The most important thing of calibration, it needs to find the bottom, the top position, and also this bullet sensor needs to be lined up correctly. So you make sure the laser goes back to the hole. Then you just press calibrate. Finds the bottom, finds the top, and it remembers the bullet sensor. It, 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 it sets up uh, the bullet sensor location. So here is in full production mode. Optical sensor, I don't really use the low primer sensor. The powder check, you can see the powder check here. The bullet. And I reliability get um, thrust 70 to 765 rounds an hour. Um, you can speed this up more, but this here, it just keeps running very reliably for me. And I'm very happy.